Yep. It feels so big. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. Well, today we are broadening my horizons. I've done like the majority of my fishing in Ontario in Sunset Country, but there is so much more than just that one region. I watched so many fishing shows growing up, watching Bob Azumi, watching the Fishing Canada show, always talking about the Algoma region. Well, we're finally going there. This is the kickoff to our road trip and we're going to meet up with Angling Algoma, a guy named Adam. Tell you all about him. He's a stick. He catches some really big fish. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Got to about another four hour drive and then Brandon and I will arrive at uh, Birchland Cottages. Tomorrow we're gonna start setting some hooks. Trophy Alley. Remember that name, Trophy Alley. traveled a fair amount of Canada. The stretch between Wawa and Sault Ste. Marie, it is stunning. It looks like the ocean out there. I mean, it's Lake Superior. It's a beast. This drive alone is just ridiculous. Look at this to the right. Stocked up on groceries. I don't know how long this trip's gonna be. We will see. Don't have a date set to go home, so we might just we might just stay here. But anyways, we got about another hour drive to Birchland Cottages. It's gonna be our beautiful accommodations. Just outside of Iron Bridge. Yeah, drive went smooth. Well, we made it. I think it took us 15 hours. We powered through. Didn't really know what we were rolling into in the middle of the night, but we were right on the shores of Clear Lake. We might fish clear yet. I'm not sure. There's a lot of lakes in the area. Obviously, you've got Lake Huron, and then you've got all these inland lakes. We met Adam last night. Angling Algoma is his business. He's a fishy dude. Within the first couple of minutes, I can tell that I was gonna learn a couple things. I'm excited to fish with him, but it's pouring right now. So we're kind of just waiting out the rain, but it's a decent spot to wait out the rain, staring at the boat, staring at the lake. I told Adam, whatever you wanna fish for, whatever you think is the best to showcase this area, I wanna see, because he's the guide, he knows best, right? So anyways, this area is called Trophy Alley for the big, big bass. He thinks that potentially a Canadian record largemouth could be caught in this area. So that. That's pretty cool. I've done largemouth trips, deep south, Texas, Louisiana. I have not done a destination Canada largemouth trip, but I don't think people think about Canada as a largemouth destination. So that's gonna be the focus today once the rain lets up a little bit. Whoppa! Gotta do my stretches. This is what I'm gonna be flipping. Some craw baits, some beaver baits. Black and blue all day. Talk to any large guy, black and blue. We'll ask Adam what his favorite color is. Black and blue, guaranteed. Or maybe watermelon. Pumpkin, that's the other option. Well, the rain stopped, we got our window. Time to catch some fish. Look, look how much tackle this guy brings. I'm gonna keep one jig on all day and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I said black and blue jig, he's gonna have just trays. You gotta be ready for everything, buddy. Something I've noticed with some of the best anglers I've fished with is they just are never settled with a the bait. They'll be catching them on one thing and they'll be like, no, but maybe there's something better. Give us a little intro, Adam. Who are you? What do you do? So I'm Adam Valley. I own a company up in Algoma called Angling Algoma. Uh, we guide summer and winter, target a lot of smallmouth, largemouth, walleye, northern pike, and muskies. Everything. How many days in the water are you? Over 100 this year for sure. No. Yeah. 
I think they're gonna be snapping. And it's getting cold. Or you're gonna drive I'll, the truck? I'll drive, yeah. All right, we're good. So is it tough for you when someone else is driving the boat or would you prefer to drive the boat? No, you're good. I'm good. Some people are like, I gotta drive the boat. Other people are like, yeah, you can drive the boat. Look at all that tackle. White chatterbait, that's, that's the opening move. Conditions say, maybe some top water, we'll see. I'm gonna get fully classed on largemouth fishing. So you said you've done tournaments all over the place? Yep. Like a little bit in the States and yeah. yeah, all over Ontario really. And they're easier to catch here? Yeah. <laughs> in Oklahoma, yeah. 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 Push straight across. Well, I'm gonna ask a lot of questions today because yeah, I'm not a large expert by any means. I'm not an expert. I anything. do have a brand new scale though. What's a good bag around here? Oh, you can get 25 out of here. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've never had a 25 pound bag of largies, that's for sure. What do you want me throwing? Well, what do you want to throw? Do you want to throw a black blue jig to start? There you go. Let's try <laughs> that. Is that, that's a swim jig, no? That's beauty. Yeah. What's your favorite, if you had to pick one bass color, Adam? Green pumpkin or black blue? <laughs> so hard that's exactly what i said this morning i said i bet you his favorite color is black blue or whatever i said a watermelon or green pumpkin or something black and blue guaranteed pumpkin that's the other option it's so hard to beat green pumpkin like they just bite it this, this is all like a nice rock bank and then you're going to get up into some grass on the left hand there's a bald eagle beautiful and would you be even with this swim style would you be hopping on bottom the whole time or keeping it a little bit up and just moving let, it let me work moving right now and yeah. you just kind of hop compared to back home a lot of weed growth here uh, this lake is pretty unique for the area. Yeah. There's a couple other places like it, but not lots. And what is it? What's what's your favorite weed here, Coontail? Uh, milfoil. Oh, there's milfoil here. Because I don't, there isn't milfoil in our neck of the woods, I don't think. Because milfoil is the best, right? Like. Yeah. And then that tobacco leaf cabbage, I call it. Oh, that stuff, yeah. That stuff's real good here, too. Just hang right here for a second Kay. now. Yeah, there's a lot of weeds here. I don't even know yeah. if you'd see the fish in there. Like, they're there. Yeah. Up here. Oof, that was something weird. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> that a boy. How about that black blue wow. jig? Wow. That's a big one. No. <laughs> that was like, that was, a good one. That was so <laughs> good. Oh, man. Oh, I was ready to boat flip them. Yeah, that might have been my biggest Canadian largie. That was a big fish. I like that first start for us. That's a great start. You don't want to catch the big fish right away. So you want to add a little uh, suspense, a little excitement. We'll go into this like little stretch of this beaver dam is, then yeah. we'll cut over, hit that point. Isn't that a moose nest? Moose? Yeah, so the moose lays its eggs. The moose sits on that, it's a moose nest. <laughs> Look, are you messing with me? <laughs> People don't necessarily associate Canada with largemouth fishing. I know it. You know, smallmouth, big smallmouth for sure. But when I heard, so your your that was your tournament partner that weighed that big bag the other day. How, yeah. how big was that? Twenty nine five or something like that. Like it was a big bag. And was that the Canadian record largemouth bag? As far as I know, yeah. That's wild. So how do they sit in this male fall? Are they like suspended halfway up? Or are they like? Well, I guess it depends on the day, but yeah, the conditions. I'd say right now they're probably suspended up in it or on the edge of it. Yeah. You know they'll be cruising with the overcast. Why are they big in this lake? Oh, nice. There we go. Go boat flip him. Just water skiing him in. Doesn't have a chance. Just a little guy. Yours would have ate him. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that's as big as they get here, eh, Adam? That's it. 25 pounds. <laughs> oh, oh that, was a, that was a bowfin. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know we're in bowfin territory. Do you get a couple of them mixed in? Giants, oh yeah. yeah. That looks so good. Before we leave this corner, we should put the... Oh, that sounded small, but... Tough to say. Can I give you some advice on your frog, buddy? Tell me, please. I want all the advice I can. Um, the way those hooks are designed, you want to be always setting straight up to your face. Okay. Yeah, always set this way, like right okay. across your nose, and you'll, your hookup ratio will be way better. Oh, Ooh. I like that. That sounded right. I will take all the advice that you're willing to give. Yeah, 10XD slow rolling them over rock points. There he is. Hit him. Oh, heads up. <laughs> Hey, that's all. That's, I, sorry, I should have gone. I should have gone straight up. That's how frog fishing is, right there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't be. That was embarrassing. Do you find they move a lot even within a day? Oh yeah. Back and forth lots. Especially yeah. if like you got changing sun conditions. What's your favorite window for largey fishing? Like time frame of year? October is unreal on the river. In this lake, if the fall is on, it can be like absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Is there weeds? Everywhere.
everywhere. Just down in the middle. Everywhere. And they could be anywhere? I just try and focus on what I think is the right weed because you catch in them, you know what I mean? But I'm sure that a lot of that junk weed or the pike weed, whatever, yeah. it's probably got them in them too. So I'm gonna be calling our shot here. We're gonna get it. We're couple, getting it? We're gonna, we're gonna get a couple bites out of this pad. Maybe you drove more, I don't know. Those ducks are having fun. There he is. Oh. Didn't sting him. Get in there, catch him. Not catch him. Oh, there he is. Got him? Yep. Nice. Not decent? He's decent. Not a big one, though. No. There we go. Now let's get one of the big ones. They all look, they, they all look small compared to that first one that I... Yeah, that one. Beautiful. Can we play that back in slow-mo? Yeah, that one. Graceful that release. Yeah, that was good. That's good. Adam called it. Yeah. I think I could do it myself. Yeah. Oh, pike. That pike just, his eyes got crossed. That was quite the hook set. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? I know. <laughs> no, that was good. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen a hook set that powerful before. Oh, two, three. Oh, gar. Wow, look at all those gar. That's not something I see at home. No? No, there's no gar at home. Oh, there's tons of them in this Really? Place. Oh my gosh, there's tons of them. Oh, that's cool. What is that? Oh, it's a, oh is that a bowfin? Yeah, it must be a bowfin or a carp. It's got, no, nah, it's gotta be a bowfin. Will it eat a jig? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez, I thought she was gonna eat it. That would have been epic. Oh, that was cool. Like all this, seeing all this stuff is so exotic to me. Seeing gar, seeing bowfin, these types of weeds. That is a nice clump right here. There we go. Oh, don't be a pike. No, it's a decent, well, two pounder, three pounder. There we go. That's a nice one. That's decent. They do live here, Jay. <laughs> hey, this looked too good to not have a bite. You know, I'm still getting over the one I lost this morning, but it's just a matter of time. Flipping a jig in these thick weeds is amazing. Cool. There you go, Algoma Largy. My first. Oh, it's bigger than I thought. 3.66, we're locking it at. All right, going back. Back into the coontail. Whoa! That bait got destroyed, but any sort of flipping craw bait. I mean, Adam's been experimenting with all sorts of stuff. 95% of my bass fishing has been flipping a jig with a craw or a creature type bait. This one's called a banger bug. But as we said, favorite colors, black and blue or like some sort of watermelon. Keep it natural. Yeah. If it's bright, you might want to go bright. You might want contrast to go dark, you know? Yeah. White, green pumpkin, black, blue. Yeah. You can pretty much cover every bit of your spectrum. I remember going to a boat show and Jeff Gustafson was there and I was so nervous to go talk to him. I was like 12 years old. My question that I had been like, I'm like, what question am I going to ask Gussie? And my question was, are there situations where you fish straight braid? Because in my mind, you're either fishing straight floor or you're fishing braid to a fluorocarbon leader. And Gussie said the one time that he'll fish straight braid is either frogging or flipping in this tough stuff. Because if I would have had a floral leader there, the knot would have been a weak spot potentially and this braid just slices through it. So this is 40 pound braid. You could probably go 60, but like, yeah. What do you like? Do you flip with 40 or 65? At 50. 50, yeah, yeah, that's the sweet spot. Just for me. Again, my hook said I break 40 too easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he swam that out. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he came he out of there him. like a shot. Hey, that's not that bad. I didn't no, think he was right. that big. That's good. Adam has me on him. I just saw my line cutting sideways. Eh, probably three pounder. We'll weigh him. 3.38. Cool. How big do you think the strike zone is on some of these when you're flipping? Do you think it's pretty tight? It depends on the conditions again, Jay, yeah. honestly. <clears throat> they'll go a little bit further on these overcast conditions where yeah. they get really tight when the sun's high, right? Yeah. Let's say the sun's tight and you're flipping. Are you flipping every three, four feet? Yeah, I really pick it apart. Usually the edges are kind of the key, but that one was right in the middle. Was right in the middle. And that's kind of frontal too. Yeah. Like that kind of goes with fronts. They'll get right into the thick of it after a front or during a front sometimes. Yep. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Oh, oh that's a nice one. Decent one. 
Oh man. That's a good one. That was so much fun. That's that was good, good dude. That was awesome. It was just like, you could hear the line just tinging. Good job, dude. That, that's pretty close to my biggest Ontario largy, I think. Yeah, four, four, and a, four and a chunk. You wanna throw me that scale? 4.72. 472, that's a four and a half. So this is, I don't want to say as big as they get back home, but I've ever only caught maybe one bigger than that back home. <laughs> that was great. Buddy, that's good. Absolutely. Hey, we're building a bag. It's a, isn't that addicting? Oh, when, when the line got tight and it starts cutting weeds and I'm just like, yeah, it's a lot of colors going on there, but it's got rattles you can hear there. And yeah, you're getting that reaction bite. It falls. It's like, you've probably seen some strike footage, but Dave Mercer has a lot of cool stuff. If you look at his YouTube channel, and it's just the jig's falling down and the bass is whoop. Sometimes you get a couple hops in and sometimes it's just on that fall, but we have a little more to pick apart here. See that cabbage there? If you cast that on the outside of that edge, see the leaf? Yeah. Oh, that's that might be the cast, Adam. I like that. Six, You're in like 20 some feet right there. Six pounder on the whopper popper. It's an eight. Oh, I'd be so, I'd be ecstatic. <laughs> it's an eight. Come on, dude, that's a nice one. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't think it's that nice. It sure crushed it though. Oh uh, no. The little one? Yeah. Little guy, we're not gonna add that guy to our weight. Bigger and better things await. That rhymed. Might become a poet. My first whopper plopper largy. These baits just catch big everything. So you said there's a lot of smelt in this lake, that's why the bass are big? Not so much in this lake. There are smelt in here, but not like other lakes. What would be the main this forage? One? Bluegill. Bluegills, yeah. Bluegill perch, yeah. The bluegills in here are just like, they used to be all pumpkin seeds and now it's like, it's incredible how many of them are in here. I feel like we can live scope it pretty quick and tell if they're there, right? Oh, well, they'll, be, yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's do that, sure. There's a stump or something down there. Look at that, look at that, look at that. I'm a spot lock. There's all sorts of fish in there, oh my gosh. Oh, look at the fish on the edge too. Like, look how straight up those, that's for sure wood. And then there's more, yeah, 28, 30 feet there. Yeah, you just drop, see you're falling down there? They're swimming away. Those look small to me. Oh, you just hammered it. He's gonna bite again. Oh, again, come on. Got him. Oh, big bluegill. PB bluegill coming up. No! Was it actually? It was for sure a bluegill. For sure a bluegill. Big giant one? Yeah. Oh, man. They're five feet over here. I was very excited about that. Here we go. Oh, he's chasing it up already. Yes. Come on. It feels so big. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Oh, my gosh. Is that a pumpkin seed? Look at that thing. Look at the bluegill and then oh the pumpkin. Oh my gosh. Hybrid. That's like, that is, that is so sweet. We're just fishing for these the rest of the trip. I don't, <laughs> I can't believe how big that thing is. That is, yeah, that's insane. Ten and a half. I've, I don't, so that's a hybrid. That's a bluegill. What, what is it across with? Like Blue, a pu pumpkin seed. Pumpkin seed and bluegill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I've, I've, I've caught. I don't think I've caught one that big. That was insane. How big was it? Ten and a half. Yeah. Nice, he's on him. That's a that's a better eater right there. Oh, we got him. And the hook came out. You were not joking about these fish. Downplaying the sunfish bite. Feels like I'm fishing in a different country. I've seen <laughs> bowfin, I've seen gar, giant gills. Oh, they're pretty aggressive to eat. They were just chasing up. I've got some weed beds that I thought they Ooh. would be. He's on him. Another little one. That's a little. Most people would be very happy with sunfish this size. That's cool, dude. He's gone. Oh, and they were really close together. Oh, it's another school. Come on. I got bluegill fever. I got absolute bluegill fever. Look at this, we got a couple left. We've like not quite depleted the entire school here, but we put a beat down on them. Oh, come on. Oh, this is fun. That's more, of, that's a full on bluegill there. See the yeah. difference in the color now? Yeah. So do the hybrids get bigger? This should get smaller, right? I find the hybrids are the big ones, yeah. We'll have this ready just in case. 
But that was a little fun break in the largey action. That was fun. These aren't big water fish yet. These are just inlanders. Yeah. We just haven't been blessed with weather today. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. We made the most of it. Exactly. That bluegill had me giddy. Okay, start running us along this edge. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be tough if you only did Huron. Yeah, you can't. And <clears throat> our inland stuff is open all year round. Yeah. The bass, right? Zone 10. That's pretty cool. 14, it changes. So that's where, that's when I opened my business. When they opened the season and I could fish all the inland lakes and our smallie fishing so good. Yeah, that, that's phenomenal. And it's yeah. like, if it's proper catch and release, and I get comments like that on videos too back home, they're like, oh, you can't, smallies are closed right now. I'm like, no, they're open year round and people, people don't realize that. I think the larger thing is an interesting product because maybe aside from Great Lakes, but I feel like any good inland bass fishing in the state, there are people there. Always, yeah. Right, so you come up here. I mean, obviously we're not fishing on a great weather day, but go all day without seeing a boat. Oh, there's tons of inland stuff yeah. too. What you got? Ooh, you flipping her? Yeah, I'll flip it, not that big. That's a nice one. A little skinny, but we'll weigh them. See, they do bite in the rain. Not like what we're looking for. Two, six, seven. We got 14.45 pounds. For four fish? For four fish. So just catch a six? Catch a six, we got 20. The fish feels warm when it's cold outside. That guy needs to bulk up a little bit. He gone. Dang close right now. Oh. Got him, dude. Yeah, that's a good one. Nice. Wasn't it? Yeah, that's decent. Oh, no, he's, well, I don't need, uh, whatever. I thought he was a lot bigger than that. I think we've caught a couple bigger than him. I know, we definitely have. <laughs> big oh, he's got a big one. You Maybe know what, I'm not, not even gonna keep this one on. Maybe not, I don't know. He's coming right at me. No. Oh. Did you see him? Yeah, he wasn't big. Two pounder. Or where Where exactly is Trophy Alley? Like, what is that region? Basically, Thessalon to Spanish, up to Elliott Lake, and then up the uh, Mississauga Valley. And wh where did that name come from? Like, who coined that, you know? Um, Colin McEwen. Oh, really? Yeah. He called the Trophy Alley and it caught on? You're gonna set it up. Uh... There you go. There you go. Huh. Look at the size of that rock bass. That's a big rock bass. They grow everything big here. <laughs> we could add them to our weight to be our fifth fish. Probably bigger than that last largey I caught. Yeah. Oh, you got me. <laughs> Gave me whiplash. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Your neck turned fast. I do that too often. I'm the boy that cries wolf. We might have come close today with that first one to 20. Yeah. But that was probably the biggest one. Oh, that was the biggest one yeah. that I've seen today. Well, thanks to Adam for an awesome day. Anyways, we're headed back to Birchland. Welcome back to Birchland. Well, we did it. We powered through. I didn't even know if we'd go fishing today. The weather was not fantastic, but we made the most of it. Some very nice bass. I'm a little bit haunted by that one I lost at the start of the day. I think that was the biggest bass, but a couple big bluegills. That might've been the biggest bluegill I ever caught. Uh, anyways, Trophy Alley. This might be some of the better largey fishing in Canada. I don't know. I'd love to spend a week here doing largey fishing, but if you are looking to book a trip with Adam, I'll go my angling, linked him below. They have bass fishing year round in this region, which is pretty unique. A lot of places close. So if you wanna come book an early season trip before season opens where you're at, hit them up. Pretty cool adventure. Anyways, Algoma region, come visit Birchland Cottages. Thanks for hosting and we're going fishing again tomorrow.